welcome to another video. My name is Richie Scholl from Worthington Distribution, and today I would like to take you through the Leviton Decor Smart Wi-Fi lighting system. We'll go through and show you the devices that make up the system, we'll show you the app, we'll show you how to add a device to the app, um, and, and we're going to also go through and um, kind of take you on a tour through the app to show you all the different features, um, what make it up, what, what different features you would want to use in there and, and show to your customers. We'll also at the end go through and talk about some applications that this system is really good for, you know, beyond just the, t the typical lighting system. And we'll also go through and show you some of the uh, Alexa integration that it has built in uh, with some other products in our lineup uh, that might be a really, really neat tool for you to use as well. So kind of to kick things off, a little bit about the system. Decor Smart Wi-Fi lighting here. Uh, is a truly hubless system, so there is no central hub uh, that needs to be that needs to be powered up in order to operate the system. Every device truly is its own uh, individual Wi-Fi client on the customer's network. So whether this is a residential installation or maybe more of a uh, light commercial installation, these devices are going to connect directly to the Wi-Fi network, just like a smartphone or a laptop would, and they live there and communicate to the cloud from that network. So what's really cool about that is it really makes the scaling very well, especially on those smaller systems. So if you think about a, a hub type system, then you have a customer that wants one or two devices to do some outdoor lighting or a pathway lighting sort of scenario, um, and you take a hub, you know, the, the price of that hub divided over two or three devices sort of adds a lot to the system. In a Wi-Fi setup like this, you know, these devices have a similar price tag to some of those others that you might use with a hub, but there is no hub to divide over those devices. So your cost per device, again, especially on smaller systems, is quite a bit lower. Um, the reliability is absolutely there. The integration is there. We're, you know, Amazon Alexa, Google Home, uh, IFTTT, and, and many others. So all the, uh, all the integration is there. Um, and, and at the end of the day, you know, the, the way that this system communicates to the cloud uh, really makes no difference to the, the customer's user experience, so to speak. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you've got an app with all the devices in it. You can control them, schedule them, you know, and, and, and that's, the, uh, that's the user experience without that hub. So we like that. Um, it makes it really economical and just makes it a real solid, reliable system. Let's take you through some of the devices that make up the system. Uh, behind me, we've got the in-wall devices uh, kind of highlighted here. So we start off with the dimmer. This is a 600 watt dimmer uh, in incandescent. Um, it also is gonna do CFL and LED. Um, one thing to really point out that makes this device uh, unique and something that Leviton worked really hard on is, is the quality of the uh, LED compatibility. So anybody who's ever done anything with LED uh, dimming especially has gone through this heartache we'll say uh, about you know what it takes to dim these lights and you get the flickering and the dimming or the, the, the you know the little bit of a flicker or dim light when the device is really off um, and some of that weirdness. We don't see a lot of that with this. They've done a really nice job um, you know for most of the, the, the dimmable bulbs that you get and put on this dimmer you're gonna see really excellent performance uh, smooth ramping up and down uh, no flickering at the bottom end and the really important one is you don't get that glow when it's off that you get with some they've, they've done a lot of work to to make that the case so you've got your dimmer uh, you know top on bottom off that's that decora form factor and then we have this bright and dim bar on the side that'll, sh that'll let you bright and dim the device and then it's hard to see but when the device is uh, ramping up and down there are some lights behind the plastic trim on the side and that shows you what level the device is at and it's also helpful when you use the bright and dim bar to, to set your dim level. Next over is our 15 amp switch so that's just hard on hard off no dimming um, that's going to be really good for some outdoor loads that you may not want to dim um, maybe some you know fluorescent lights in a garage that sort of thing um, and also some light motor loads so 15 amp capacity on that. We have an outlet next in the line um, really good device for um, behind a, an end table where you want to do some some uh, table lamps and not have that module that maybe somebody's going to move or, or lose on you. So built into the wall, you have a button in the middle for local control. Top half of the outlet is always on. I'm sorry, the top half of the outlet is controlled, so it's controlled by the app or the button. Bottom half is always on, so you do have that always on uh, option on that on that outlet. We're going to skip down one here to the voice dimmer. Same functionality as the dimmer that we showed you in the beginning, but the big difference here is this has a speaker and mic built in and, it's a, and it is a full Alexa unit built into uh, the in-wall dimmer. So you get that mixed functionality there. It's a really cool device to put in a room and not have to have the dot or some other device there um, and it's all built in. Alexa, what time is it? It's 9.02 a.m. 
So we have that built in. Really cool way to control the system since it works with, uh, with, that, with the Echo anyway. Um, it's a really neat way to have it all in one device. We'll bounce back one here and we've got the scene controller. Um, this is a really cool addition to the lineup and it now takes us from, you know, the only way to control it is from in each device individually or from the app to now we have this always in the room, always ready controller um, that users can, can select and, and do a number of different functions. We've got our sets that we have one that does the entire room on, another one that does the entire room off. As we, uh, as we move on through the, through the video today, we'll show you how to set those buttons up and do other things, but they can be individual devices or groups of devices. It's kind of that scene set up. So we can, we can assign those devices to it, have them do a number of different functions. Again, a uh, really nice device to open this up to more of just a control system, more of a, a, an actual lighting system. We've got some other devices to talk to you about. Um, part of it is we have a, a couple of plugins. There's a, a plug-in dimmer and a plug-in switch. These are going to be fantastic for your, you know, seasonal lights, holiday lights, um, for table lamps, that sort of thing. So we have those. And another uh, relatively new addition is going to be what we call the Anywhere switch. This, uh, this is a dimming model. There's a switch only. The dimmer has the bright dim bar. Uh, what's cool with these is um, they're going to let you, whether or not you use the cloud, these do not even use the internet. These are uh, more of a Bluetooth sort of thing. These talk directly to the devices um, and give you kind of that virtual three-way. Since the beginning of you know, modern lighting systems as, as we've known it, going back you know, to uh, in the 90s, one of the really popular things that folks want to do with these is say, you know, I've got this device, uh, this little switch that turns the light on and off, and it's in this location in the house, and I want to control it from somewhere else, um, but it's impossible to get a wire there. How do we do it? Well, with this, you're going to put you know, this, your switch or dimmer where the actual load is. We're going to mount this. Um, wherever else we want to have that third control point or that second control point, we uh, set them up with a quick process to uh, link the two together and now you have it. You have like over a hundred foot range um, so it'll, you'll cover you know most houses with this and just a really really cool device to get that local control. A couple important things with this you'll notice um, it is a decora form factor so it's gonna uh, give the option to really put this thing anywhere even if you do not have uh, a wall box there. It's gonna come with the double stick tape to put it on the wall. It takes a standard trim ring um, and that lets you you know put it right in and, and, and add a switch where there wasn't one. We'll also show you a little bit later how to add this in a two gang plate where you already have one gang and it makes that kind of one gang location into a two but without cutting any holes in the wall or doing any you know extreme modifications. Okay, so now I would like to take you through the My Leviton app. This is a free download from the App Store or the Play Store. Great on smartphones, uh, on tablets, anything you want to use it on. Just go through that and show you how the app works. Um, and before we do that even, we'll show you how to add a new device into the app because that's where you would start anyway. So when we look at it here, uh, you'll see that we have some data on the top that's coming from the Leviton Load Center. That's a different display that we have kind of going in here. Um, and it's a topic for another video, but that's, that's what you see. The next thing down is called the kitchen. You can see the app is kind of um, differentiated by rooms. We're calling everything here in this setup uh, the kitchen, so to speak. So that's kind of a little bit of groundwork for that. Where we're going to start is we're going to hit the plus sign on the top of the app here. And you can see we can add a device, add a room, add breakers. Again, it depends what products you're using. The real two things you want to focus on here are add device and add room. You could start with a room uh, and add all your rooms first and have them ready if you had devices in multiple rooms especially. Um, and then you could add your devices into those rooms. You can also organize it later. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into add device. And it says, what do you want to add? We're going to add a switch. And now three things come up here, which is a good opportunity for us to talk about some different uh, series of the product. As we sit here today, most of the product is in its second generation. Um, and that's some things that you see on the screen here. Um, but let's talk about the three and kind of what makes them different. When the product first came out, they started with a part of DW was the part number. So think Decora Wi-Fi. That's your first generation. Um, the easy way to tell if you have a first generation device, especially if you're talking about a switch or dimmer, is they would have screw terminals on the back that you would connect your wires in the wall box to. Um, and the real difference from, a, from an installer standpoint is that the setup is a little bit different between the first and second gen devices. On the first gen devices, and this is important either if you run into some out in the field, maybe you have some sitting around that you haven't used, or uh, keep in mind like the, the four button scene controller and the voice dimmer are still under the first generation from a setup standpoint. So the difference there is when you hop into the app and say, I'm going to set up a first generation device, it'll walk you through the appropriate steps. But what basically happens is the first generation device will send up a kind of a Wi-Fi hotspot. You'll see its name come up in your Wi-Fi list and you connect to that 
through the app and then that's how the your phone or your tablet can communicate with the device is actually over a Wi-Fi network that that thing to, the, that device creates if we move down to the second generation um, it makes it a little bit more uh, user friendly to set up just a quicker easier process really is what it comes down to um, on the second gen devices which are easily uh, defined by the part number that starts with a D2 think uh, second generation so D2 you can also tell them because in a switch and a dimmer anyway you're going to have pigtails on the back now not, not screw terminals so those are your D2 devices. The big difference there is they set up over Bluetooth. So your device will find, your, your smartphone I should say, will find any devices that are brand new out of the box. Their light, their locator light on them will flash quickly and the, the app just finds them and you can add them in. So we'll talk more about that in a second. The last thing here are these no neutral devices. Um, these are brand new. They just got added to the, to the app recently and um, the devices are actually not shipping for another couple of weeks. So stay tuned for some more information on that. But basically um, this is a way to accommodate wall boxes or, or switch locations that do not have neutrals in them. These devices of the current generation and the first generation require a neutral. Um, so more, more to come on that and how they communicate. Um, but the really important thing to, to keep in mind here is whether you're on a first gen, second gen, or new, no neutral, they look exactly the same. In, in order, in, I mean the, the customer facing product is the same and the user experience in the app is the same. So uh, not too big of a deal from that standpoint. We're going to go into our second generation switch. It's going to say, before we start, you know, is this thing installed? Is it powered on? And this little locator light on the bottom flashing quickly. You probably won't see that on the camera, but it is. So we're going to say, yes, let's go. So it jumps in and says, uh, start scanning, and it found a device. I only have one new device. Like I said, everything in this display except for the switch is already in my app. It's already on my account. Um, so this is the only one that's going to show up. A little pro tip for you here. Um, left DS uh, dash switch dash A6 EF you see here. Those last four digits at A6 EF is the, is the last four digits of the MAC address is really what it comes down to, but that's the unique identifier for this device. So let's play out a scenario here. You're in a customer's kitchen and you put maybe five devices in there. So you have like the ceiling lights, the counter lights, the you know accent lighting, whatever the case is. Maybe it's five different devices and you put you, you powered them all up and now you're ready to set them up and six or for those five devices are going to show up on your screen on your screen you say well which one's which the tip there is don't pop your wall plate on until after setup because that four digit code appears on the on the front of the device so you're going to have that there um, so you can know which one you're working on so that's kind of the that's the little little tip there so we're going to select that one we'll say next so it's going to try to find that device now and connect to it and we'll see in a moment where it does that now what's happening is that actual device is scanning for the Wi-Fi networks that it can see. So we're going to put it on, um, you know, we'll go ahead and stick it on Worthington. We'll say next. I'll type in our password. Say next. So now it's going to transfer the, the information that I just typed into the app over Bluetooth to the device. The device will connect and then we'll, we'll see back in a moment here that it's connected and, and ready to go for us. There we go. Next step, you can say skip for now, but if you want to, you can actually you know, choose an, uh, an icon for it. So I'll choose this little recessed can light. So we give it a name. The name that's in here right now was derived from the picture that you chose, so that might work for you. Um, in our setup, we're just going to call it switch because we have kind of one of each device in there and that's sort of the easiest way for us to do it in the display setup. We'll say next. Here's the next cool part. Um, we already had rooms created, so it's saying here are all the rooms that you have. Uh, you could pop them in one of your existing rooms, or you could say here are some suggested rooms, meaning these are like the, the common ones that people use. You could select one of those. Um, or up on the top, you could do create a room and make your own right here. So this kind of goes back to what I said earlier where we said it doesn't really matter what device or what order you do this in. You know, create rooms and then add devices or, you know, add devices and then assign them to rooms. The end result is going to be the same. So we'll say kitchen, add to room. It's going to give you a little bit of a rundown of other um, services that are supported by the Levitin devices. We're going to say finish. And now you notice if we go down to our kitchen room, there are now four devices in it. So let's take a spin through the app here and we'll kind of show you some of the, some of the things. So like I said, we put everything here in this uh, room called kitchen. So I can turn it on or off. 
When on or off there means we're turning all the devices in the room on or off. I could tap on one device. If I just tap on dimmer, you'll see the dimmer ramp up and come on. And that did a couple things. The, the icon for the dimmer in the app now lit up green to say that it's on. And it also shows the room as on now. That's an important note to make is that even if there's just one device in the room that's on, uh, the, the app is going to show you as that room on. So it's really easy to go back and say, oh, I'm going to say, I want to turn that room off. So we hit the off button and, and the room goes off. Let's take a look at our two-way feedback. I'm going to turn our switch on real quick. And then you'll see immediately in the app, uh, it shows as on, same thing, the, the room light comes on. Um, so that, that two-way communication is there and it is just about instantaneous. So here I'll turn off that device and you see the app has it right away. So those are, uh, that's a really quick way to, to use the system. If we can hit the menu, there's some other things we can do where we can, again, turn the device on or off from with, kind of within that device rather than from the overview. We can drag up and down to adjust the dim level. So we've got that. Um, there's some other features on the bottom here. So device settings where we could go in and set up some of the more, um, you know, some of the minutia about the device. So the advanced settings are things we can do like, uh, how does it act at night? Do you want the locator light to be on or off? Um, what type of bulb is in there on a dimmer? You can change that and it'll help change the, the way that the dimmer operates that bulb to get that really good LED functionality in there. Um, fade on and fade off rate. If you notice when we turn this device on and off, it ramps up and it ramps down. Those fade rates are um, how long in seconds does it take to go from zero to 100 or from 100 to zero? So you can adjust that in here. Um, the dimming range, like uh, again on LED devices, um, they don't have a really good, uh, they don't have really good performance at the low end. So we can say, just don't even try to dim it below 10%. You can crank that up a little bit if you have a bulb that's a little more finicky, or if you get a really high quality bulb that you think does have better range, you can kind of trim that down and, and open up that range uh, so it works for you. So those are some of our advanced settings. Um, you know, identify device is going to flash the locator light on the bottom of the device so that you can find which one you're talking about. Again, maybe you, maybe you had one that got named wrong, so you can always go back and change that. Um, if we go into device health, we can see what kind of signal strength it has. We can look for firmware updates. Um, all those kind of device, you know, kind of functionality parts uh, are in there. That last option where it says delete from residence is how you would remove it from the app altogether and just say you don't have it anymore sort of thing. Um, so that's the, kind of the, the short story on the regular devices, you know, turn on and off, bright and dim, functionality, that sort of thing. So now we want to talk about the four button controller. This device has some more functionality, a lot more flexibility. So let's go through all of the options that are on it. If we tap the expanded menu, the three dots there, you can see on your app, you'll see button one, two, three, and four. And in this screen, tapping the buttons here will perform the exact same activity or you know, cause the same event to happen as if you touched it on the physical device. So where we really want to get into is this reconfigure buttons. So if we hit that, and then go to button one. Now you can see all of the options you have and the different things you can do with each button. We have run a whole home activity, which is, uh, we saw those activities earlier, um, kind of built into the app in that different tab on the bottom, so we'll talk about them. Uh, we can toggle a single device. Toggle means press it one, it comes on. Press it again, it goes off. Um, control multiple devices. So in that case, uh, we can uh, set up a group of devices. Maybe they're all in one room, maybe they're in a few different rooms, and we can have them come on or off together. Um, run a room scene. Again, there are already scenes built into a different area of the app, so we can just call up those scenes instead of having to do it in multiple places. Um, toggle from the home to the away mode just with one touch, or trigger an activity through IFTTT. So this really just kind of sends uh, a blurb out to IFTTT that it can watch it and say, okay, do these other things, you and these other systems, uh, whatever systems you have uh, tied into that. So we're in button one here, and we're gonna make that toggle a single device. And we're gonna go with the switch, We'll say next, just kind of repeat to you, said, okay, you're toggling, you're toggling the switch with this button. We say save, and we're now done. So if we hit that on the app, let me get done here. If we now go back in and hit that toggle switch, you'll see it go on and off. And if I touch it here, same thing, all right? So now if we hop back into reconfigure buttons, we'll go through the rest. Button two, um, I'm gonna make that uh, run one of my, um, my activities. So if I go to run a whole home activity, um, I did set up the leaving for work to do a few things. Uh, it's gonna turn off 
all the devices except the voice dimmer, it leaves that at like 25%. So we can have that done right here. So we'll, we'll get back to that one, we'll save it. Button three, we're gonna go with multiple devices. So I'm gonna say I want, in that case, everything in my kitchen group to come on to 100%. Now in this case, watch out at the top here, it gives you uh, the option to name this device. So we're gonna call this kitchen on. We'll save that. Now my bottom one, I'm gonna to have to turn all the devices in the kitchen off. So again, we're gonna say control multiple devices. And this time, we're gonna make sure we, we set them to off. So checking the box says, I wanna do something to this, to this device. And then the options there um, say, what is it that we're gonna do? So if we do not check the box for, for a specific device, like if you look lower in my list here, in that other room, if we don't check it, we just don't do anything to it. It stays in whatever state it's currently in. So next, we're gonna go back to name the button. We'll call this kitchen off. Save, and now we are done. So again, if I go back into that device, um, toggle the switch is going to do that. Um, kitchen on, turns on every device in the room. Kitchen off, turns every device in the room off. If I flip back to kitchen on, just so that everything comes on, and then I'll show you here, I'll use the leaving for work, so I'll press this one. Everything went off except that uh, voice dimmer stayed at 25%. So again, keep in mind in this screen of the app, we're really just able to kind of uh, initiate these buttons from the app, but they do the exact same thing uh, when you touch it. So as you can see, we've brought in our Rust Sound voice play demo to add to the setup here. Uh, Barry did a video on this a few weeks ago. We'll link to that down in the description if you want to get a more in-depth look at that. But that's basically a, 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 a powered keypad that's got Alexa built in. Really cool system. Uh, great for new and retrofit installations. It pairs well with this because we're kind of getting into our Alexa conversation here. So the voice dimmer, which is part of the Leviton Decor Smart Wi-Fi system, uh, is here in our display. We've got it muted right now. But let's go ahead and unmute it. The top button, which is kind of glowing red right now to indicate that it is muted. We'll hold that down for a moment. Alexa, turn on the kitchen lights. Alexa, turn off the kitchen lights. Alexa, play 90s music. Alexa, set the volume to four. Alexa, turn off the music. So there you have it. If we move over to the Rust Sound side, let's mute this one. We're gonna unmute this keypad. Alexa, play 90s music. iHeart 90s Radio from iHeart Radio. Shake that body for me. Alexa, stop playing. Alexa, turn on the kitchen lights. Alexa, turn off the kitchen lights. All right, so uh, really quick, you know, voice demo there for you. I'm pretty sure everybody knows how Alexa works. A brief conversation on that. There are a couple ways that we find uh, installers kind of look at the Alexa integration uh, as it applies to their customers and how they interact with their customers. The first is, um, you know, you can look at that as a very consumer oriented product, something that's meant to be maybe direct to consumer and something is somewhat of a, a competitor to that custom installation business. Um, on the other hand, you could look at it and say, well, that really does create just a ton of awareness in the marketplace. Um, every consumer pretty much is aware of Alexa, whether they, whether they use it or not, whether they have some extent of it or not, they're at least aware of it. And I think that's probably one way to look at it is to say, well, you know, we can really capitalize on that awareness and say, okay, not every customer is going to install their own light switches, install their own audio system, uh, install their own thermostat. And we can really build that out to the whole, you know, the smart, smart home ecosystem and say, you know, some customers just are not going to take those devices out of the wall and replace them. And that's where professionals come in. 
you absolutely have an opportunity to go in there and say to those homeowners, you know, I can install this for you. We can take it as far as, you know, hooking it up to the app, making sure that everything works for the customer. Whether or not you go as far as to integrate it with Alexa, maybe you leave that to the customer, maybe you, you know, do, do that as part of the service you perform. Um, but there's, a, there's definitely a lot of opportunity there to get involved and, you know, kind of bridge that gap between what the customer is willing to do from a DIY standpoint and what they're not. And that's kind of where you step in. The last part to cover is the Anywhere Companion Switch. I've got one here. As you can see, it's a very thin, low-profile device. Um, this one is the Switch version. We are going to pair it to our Switch. There's also a dimmer version, which would have the up and down toggle on the side, just like the, uh, the physical Switch has. So a couple notes on this. You could stick the double, double face tape on the back, put a single gang wall plate on it, put it on your wall, and really nobody would know the difference as to whether they're using a, an actual wired Switch or this. This has two coin batteries in it, five year battery life minimum, um, 50 foot coverage range, so really a lot of cool applications for this. Let's go ahead and get it paired up. We're gonna open it. You see it kind of just kind of flops open, hinged like a door. There are two batteries. Each one has one of the plastic uh, isolation tabs in it, so we're gonna pull them out so they can pair up, power up. And as soon as we do that, we get a quick blinking green light on the bottom. That means this is in pairing mode, so that's all we have to do with that. Now we want to go to the device that we want to pair to it, and we're going to tap the on side of that device five times pretty quickly. And there you have it. We had a quick um, orange flash on the bottom to indicate successful pairing, but as you can see now, I can off and on from the device, off and on from the companion switch. Really pretty easy. So the really cool mounting option for this, I alluded to this earlier, is if you have a one gang box somewhere in the house where the customer wants to control some other device, there's a really cool way to do this. So let's take this, um, this Rust Sound voice plate keypad, for example. We're going to pop the single gang wall plate off. I have a double gang wall plate with me. We're going to mount this up. Now, without making any modifications to the box, we're not drilling any holes, doing anything. We're just going to pretty much hang that new companion device off of the existing device and put our plate back on. And here we have it. Again, nobody would be the wiser. The profile, the look and feel is exactly the same to the actual device. Um, really cool way to put in that three-way that the wires just aren't there for. So, in closing, I want to really uh, thank you and appreciate your time for hanging out with us here and watching this video. Um, I hope you found it interesting and, and informative. Again, really solid system, whether you're doing a handful of devices or maybe even a house full. Uh, some really cool Alexa integration, really cool problem solver, really cool as a timer, just a lot going on here. So we will put our complete contact information in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Uh, find out if this is a, a solid solution for an application you may have coming up and we'd love to help you out with that. Thanks again, have a great day.